Good morning. I'm going to try something I haven't done uh, in a long while. I did do another jacket, but not with this type of paint. So I'm using leftover paints that I have remaining from um, Dixie Belle and Country Chic, Chic, Chic paint. I'm never going to say that word right. Jason's laughing right now. This is a vintage guest jacket that has damage and that it's fraying. And so I am using leftover paints that are down here. Just a glass jar with water in it. A bunch of different sizes of brushes and a water bottle sprayer. I think I called it a water brush earlier in another video, but it's not a brush. As you can see, it's a sprayer. So I'm going to start out with doing some vanilla. No, I'm not going to do vanilla frosting. So bear with me as I do this. And uh, I know it's not the greatest view, but I am going to start out with switching gears. And I know it's going to goop up on this and it's going to move. So it's not like the canvas I just did the other day. Um, similar, but not. So I am going to start off with, let's do, let's do a Dixie Old Peacock. And tap that on the floor so it opens up. Okay, we have to tap it again. There we go. So this has been sitting for a while and I'm not adding in water. I'm just going to use it such as and i'm going to try to start down here at the base which is gonna be hard because this is where most of the, is the jacket is peeling so i'm going to go across this a couple times make sure the paint really gets on there okay and this becomes like neck and i'm going to come down now i don't know if you can see that the jacket of course i'm going to be right in the way aren't i and filming this sideways isn't greatest. I wish I could uh, figure out how you, you professional people, do this. Filming so loverly. So I'm just going to block. Okay, so just ignore me as I block my own video. But this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to dab it on. Get it into all those parts of the jacket that are fraying and coming up. I believe we got this jacket at a charity sale shop. And... Um, it was like, a, you know, one of those things where you fill a bag for a certain price. Thought this jacket was really cool, moto cool, black, leathery jacket. And come to find out, we got home, hadn't checked the back, and the back was just disintegrating, as you can see. Actually, the front's disintegrating a little bit. So there you go. That is the start of the neck. And um, I got this idea again from... Lena Carolina Interiors. She's in Sweden, I believe. And thank goodness for the internet because I love watching her create things and she creates very awesome little mid-century funky little things. Okay, I'm dipping into the water and the next color I'm going to do is going to be the vintage... Should I do yellow? I'm going to do pink, the vintage cupcake. Now I am dipping in, which is contaminating a little bit my paint, but I don't care because I use these colors a lot and I want it to be a little contaminated. So I'm going to come up and I know this looks rough. They're starting to blend together because I didn't let one dry, kind of overlapping a little bit. And I'm also uh, covering up again that damage on the uh, on the uh, jacket. So I'm having to go over the jacket a couple of times to get the fraying parts. You know, people pay really good money to fray their jackets, and this one's already frayed for us. So there you go. Distressed is the other word used. Custom distressing. I love it. So I'm going to dab this on there pretty thick. Just because I say thick doesn't mean it uses a lot of paint, though. So here I go, coming across. I did not prep the jacket. I just started on me. I did not put a, a primer or a sealer on it to start with. All right. And I see parts are peeling, so I'm going to come up now and make the neck a little bit more elongated. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to rinse that out. 
and I am painting flat. Last time I painted a canvas, if you watched that video, just look for um, girl arts or something like that. Art made from furniture paint. And the neck, and now I'm going to start on the face, which I really didn't have to wash out this brush as much as I did. I'm gonna go back to the peacock. and do this brush. Okay, so I do have some paper towels here to kind of dry out the brush a little bit after I get in the water. And I'm going to switch sides and start this face here, coming up and then coming around. I guess that's how I want the face to be. And I'm gonna fill in, sorry if I am blocking or uh, yeah. Shirt's falling. Going over some of the damaged part of the jacket again. Connecting there. Now, there we go. If you were doing this on a jacket or a pair of jeans that isn't distressed, you wouldn't have to do all this extra dabbing and stuff. You would just smoothly glide it on and use your water bottle if it's jeans to give it a little bit more porous because this is leather or vinyl, I'm not sure which one it is. Um, it is not needed to be wetted down. Okay, I'm gonna switch gears. I'm gonna rinse out my brush a little bit in this water. I'm gonna go back to the Country Chic pink. Take my brush and get some of that water and all that color out, but I am leaving some of the blue on there. See on the brush, you can still see some of the blue. Dabbing back in to the pink and I'm going to continue this face. I want it to go this far over. That's a big face. Probably made it too wide, but because it is a cartoonish mid-century type face, I'm fine with that. Kind of just go with the flow and I'm going to butt these colors up together kind of like I did on the neck part and then I'm going to just pull it down. Like you can see, there's less damage of this jacket over here, less distressing. So it's easier to paint and it's going to dry quicker. I may turn the uh, the fan on behind me to dry this in between a little bit, just to get a little bit more drying. But sometimes I like to go ahead and just use the wetness of the paint and the blending organically by keeping some parts wet and some part dry, meaning let it dry naturally. So it's up to you. You can speed up the process by using a a fan on it for just a few minutes. Um, some people use a heat gun. I wouldn't on this because of the fabric. All right, so now you've got the beginnings with a mid-century girl. Now we're going to start on the what we call the hair. Uh, I say what we call, but it's not exactly your typical hair. Um, I'm going to use a little smaller brush and I may change my mind on that. And I'm going to use Dixie Belle Sea Glass and Dixie Belle Limeade because, well, I love both of those. Uh, I'm going to start with the Limeade, dipping in kind of thick. And I'm just going to come across here just a little bit to give it a, you'll see it's blending. Part of the distressing of the jacket is still going on. Am I in the way? Yes, I am in the way. And just show you that I'm going to go up to about here. I'm going to come down to about here. Just come around to about here. And I'm going to, using the black of the jacket as a kind of a backdrop. On the other painting I did, I actually had to paint the black on to give it some contrast. So I do want some of the black peeping out and I do want it to look distressed and like stringy kind of hair. Come up a little bit, down a little bit. Kind of give it some flow with the texture of letting the brush do its job and letting the texture of the jacket kind of show through. Always come back and add more to it. So let me see. Let me dip in again. And kind of like these side 
sweat bang thing she's got going on. At least that's how I'm going to do it. Now I've got some of the blue mixing in right here. You can see, and that's okay. I'm just going to continue letting the paint do what the paint wants to do. I am not adding the water bottle yet. I may not with this particular one because of the way the material is made. Some of the distressing parts of the jacket are coming off as I'm working with it and some are just opening up and I'm making sure there's paint on both sides of the distressing so that if it did fall off, um, the image would still be there. Now, why did I choose a jacket with so much distressing? One, because it's, it's good to play with new techniques and stuff, with stuff that you're maybe it makes you less afraid to use something that may have possibly been just in the five or ten dollar bin um, due to its um, condition and if that makes you feel safer to paint on something that's not as valuable as others then that's what I'm showing you to do. Now I'm going to rinse off this brush and that same water jar I'm using and just use a paper towel. It's probably a better angle I could have done this with but and then I'm going to take the um, sea glass paint. I'm going to dip in and get some thickness out of that. Um, the reason why I say that's part of the paint is a little bit thin because I added some water to it. But for this project, I want it to be thicker. Now see how when I touch the other part, it starts to blend. Oh, I wish I could get in here. Here, I'm going to go like this. That's okay. Because what I'm doing is fine. It's not, uh, I want, the blending is what makes it a custom piece. Because you can't get that without some wetness and some texture. And I don't know. I just like it. I don't like it when things are absolutely precise. Hence, I could not be an engineer. That would be wrong make a bridge that's not precise for a house <laughs> and here we go I'm gonna come down I'm gonna bring her face a little bit smaller so even though I painted the roundness of her face earlier I'm changing that up a bit by just using my paint And I noticed her hair <laughs> is bigger on one side than the other, so I'm going to fix that a little bit by just adding some more space over here for her hair. Although, maybe like me, my hair is up today, one side is up and one side is down. You never know. With hair, you can adjust it. Again, there's some distressing of the jacket on this side, so I am making sure to paint on both sides of the distressing flap of the material in case it comes off, so that way it doesn't come off completely. Now, she's looking a little chaotic. Now she's longer on this side. So what I'm gonna do is dip, keep the same brush, dip right into the limeade, and then Taper her hair down on the side, and it's going to have a blended look of both colors. Perfect. Then I'm going to go back into the sea glass, dipping in with the same brush, and I'm going to give it a little bit of a curl in. Because it has a little bit of the other color on it, like it as it's a little. There we go. All right, here she is coming along. I'm gonna let her dry for a few minutes and then work on it again. All right, I took a few minutes, probably about five minutes to turn the fan on and let this dry a little bit, but also to answer Kayla Pickron and Jason at work because customers had brought in some stuff to sell us, some vintage hats and jewelry. So since I'm using my phone, I have to do double duty. I'm technically at work while doing this, so. Part of being a business center, I love it. So I think I'm going to take this time to work on the eyes a bit. I can't decide if I'm gonna go with black with white dots or white with black, but I think I'm gonna go with white with black. So I'm gonna use Vanilla Frosting by Country Chick. Um, I do have fluff in 
Dixie Belle, but because this one's closer, I'm grabbing this one. Okay, maybe this one has never been used. Who knew? Okay, so because of that, I'm going to stir this up a bit to get the, uh, there we go. And things sit for a while, or as this one, I may have never opened this one before. I thought I had some of the paints, You just like any paint, you got to stir it up a bit. Especially with white, because it's going to go to the bottom. All right. Things I could have done while we were waiting, right? Okay, so now, because it is a white goopy mix, I am going to make a mess and just do this real quick. And because her eyes are similar to what I said in the other video, kind of like the big eyes artists when they did the big cartoonish eyes, mid-century style, it's okay for it to be a big goopy mess because that's part of why it turns out to be the way it does, which is really cool. So I'm going to spread that over. I'm going to dump down into that paint and get some more off the bottom because it's still oozing up. Can you see that? Or am I just right in the way? Okay. And because this is really thick, the way I had to put it on, it's going to take a while for that to set up. I'm going to come back over here and add a little bit more of white so those eyes really pop. And you can see this is on a slant because of the material, so that might drip a little bit, and that is quite all right. I want it to do whatever it wants to do. Okay, it would be nice to put the right cap back on the right thing. There. Now I'm going to take, while that's happening, I'm going to take my, uh, there. Get the edges of this cleaned up. I dripped all the way down. And I'm going to take some of that paint off of this brush and then dip it back in the water. Same water, as you can tell, <laughs> the color changes as each thing gets things. So I'm going to clear up the paint. You could rinse this out if you want, but I'm okay with using it as a blending tool. All right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to dry off that. Still has some white on the brush. And at this point, I'm going to put the eyelashes on, which are in black. And I am going to use Dixie Belle's Midnight Sky, which is big black. Normally you might want to wait for the eye drops to dry, but you know me, I don't wait for things. I'm very impatient. Just ask my mother. And, <laughs> and I'm going to do these crazy little big eyelashes. There we go. Cartoon style, cartoon-ish. This one might drip because it's on the fold of that jacket. And if it does, that's okay. I'm dipping back in and I'm trying not to mix the eyelashes with the white of the eye itself. I do kind of want this separate. Then I'm going to come over here. Oh gosh, I think I'm going to block the beat, but whatever. There's one eyelash. There's another eyelash. I did get a little bit of white into that and that's okay. Don't freak out. Let's see if we can pull that down a little bit. I'm going to go back over it to make it dark. Dip in a little bit. I did switch to a smaller brush to do these eyelashes. Come up a little bit. Now these might drip on this side because of the way the jacket is laid out. Now there's three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. That might drive some people crazy. Different eyelashes. So I'll put one more back over here. It happens. There. See those eyelashes? Now I'm going to do the same thing coming back across the bottom. Try not to blend too much with the white of the eye. Now that eyelash got a little bit bigger because of the way I drew it, but that's okay. Down. And come down. And make one more. A little crazy, huh? Just like I want it. I want it to be bright and crazy. Okay, now this one, because of the jacket, the way it's laying, and I'm trying not to move the jacket, I want it to, it is kind of clumped up right here, and I want it to stay that way, because if I move it, it'll change the way this white of this eyeball is dripping. 
you know what I mean? That goop up and stay organically crazy. Okay, I got into a little bit of the white there and that's okay. Just gonna go with it. There. White of the eyes. And what I'm gonna do, I have a little bit of this left over, this black. I'm gonna come up here. This is still damp up here and I'm gonna kind of make a hint of a part in her hair. It's not perfect. It's a little, a little off a little bit, but give it a little bit more dimension up there. See it? Now, once those eyes dry, I'm going to put black circles in the middle, but I really want those to dry because I want the black of the eyes to really pop. I like blending some of the stuff in the hair and such, but with that particular thing, I want it to pop. I am going to take a little bit of this black and give the hair just a little bit of dimension on both sides. Kind of brings it back to the color of the jacket. Gives it a little bit more grungy look. Across here. Now some of this is still wet, so that gives it a little distressing. And I'm basically just offloading my brush by adding some highlights with the black paint. All right, I'm gonna stick the paint into the jar, close up these cups. And you know what, actually, before I do that, well, I've already put it in the water. I'm going to offload a little bit. This brush had black on it and I put water on it. And in the meantime, I'm still going to use the black since we're still waiting for this to dry. Maybe give her a little bit of the nose. I think her nose should go here. It's a little bit bigger nose than I wanted, but it's quirky. And now for, I am gonna move the jacket just a little bit, try not to mess too much with the eye, because I want her lips to be diva-ish, pointed. There we go, we got the point of the lips. And then now I'm going to make the mouth kind of come down, pouty, pouty lips, a little bit more black. Turn my hair a little bit, leaving a little bit of the um, other part of the jacket showing through. And then I'm going to connect this like this and this. And I'm going to give it a little bit of separation and then I'll add a different color. There we go. So we went ahead and did that, getting a little bit more of the character into it as we wait. Okay, we've been letting this dry for about 30 minutes. Um, I had to take a break to handle some stuff for work and I had to eat a little bit. And then I just heard on the news that Kobe Bryant allegedly has died in a helicopter crash in LA. Um, hope that's not true, but for all you LA Lakers fans out there, um, several news places are reporting it now, not just TMZ. So, prayers out for that family and all his loved ones. Um, okay, so, wow, well, yeah, just take me back a little bit. Life is short. I'm going to now add eyeballs. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. There. Yep, so I thought the white is still really wet because it's real thick. So it's going to be a little bit of a blend eyeball. It's not perfectly round. That's what I love about cartoonish and mid century stuff. Well, not mid-century. Mid-century has a lot of straight lines as far as furniture goes, but as far as um, artwork, you can make it what you want. This side, the white is a little bit drier. It's a little bit easier to turn the brush and not get a blend.
kind of let that dry and then maybe come back over with a little bit of black to make it blacker so I was speaking that eyeball so there is that I guess now I'm going to give it a little definition here don't have to do this but I decided I wanted a little definition I want a little bit of a cat eye here a little bit of an angle so I'm going to do the same over here I'm just taking a little bit of black paint and putting her eyeliner if you will and then over here I want a little bit of a angled look so I'm going to go out and do like that again doesn't have to be perfect guys it just has to be whatever you want it to be it's your creation nobody else's remember that you're only doing this for yourself you don't have to worry about anybody else so so far so good um let's see if I can now course so we'll just start with a little bit more black on this eyeball I'll give it a little bit more round look there okay so we'll let that dry I think I'm going to add a little a bit of lipstick now still using the same of water to rinse out. Get some of that off on this brush, this offloading, just on a paper towel. And now, um, I can't decide if I'm going to do our lips purple or if I'm going to go ahead. I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with the pink. It's a uh, plum crazy, which is a kind of a you know, plum purple and pink together a little bit left in this jar and I'll give it a pop of yes I love and I am using the same brush I was just using filling in her lips Okay, and since we already have this open, instead of using the purple for a little bit of detailing under her neck, I'm going to go ahead and use this color. Okay, Mikey, now's not the time to uh, step in. He's right here about to step in. Hi, Mikey. I guess you could see. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> there he is. Mikey, you do not want to drink that paint water. He just got up from his nap and he's like, hey, what's going on over here? Let me let me get into this like I always do. I'm a cat. I got to check everything out. All right. So I am just lining her jawline. Touching that up a bit. I could go ahead and do it with Plum Crazy. Wait, yeah, Plum Crazy. I almost thought it was Peony, which is another color by Dixie Belle that I love to use, but I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit to cover up there. So I know it's probably a little awkward, but I'm gonna give it a little bit of touch here. I need a little bit of touch here because of that distressing. There we go. Didn't have to be exactly like that, but I think that's kind of a little bit better. Gives it more pop of the color, which is what I like. The cartoonish, see that? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down. 
here during this distressing and give like a little bit of a, a line, a little crease down the center of the neck. All that cracking it. I'm just using what is left on the brush. Gives a little bit of definition. And I'm liking that. Wait a minute and see if those eyes, those eyes are probably going to be wet for a while. So while that, I'm just going to give it a pop of white into the iris. Um, I'm going to add a little bit to her hair. Since that is pretty much dry. And again, it doesn't have to be dry because blending is fun. So I just happen to have stuff I had to take care of and watch the news about Kobe Bryant. Um, so yeah, let me bring this down a little bit. So I decided on this side of her hair, I want a little bit more color, um, a little bit more saturation, not color. So I'm going to come back over to the sea glass paint. I'm going to use a different brush. This is the brush I used earlier, cleaned out, like originally used. So I'm only using a couple brushes. Now I'm just going to bring this in. I decided I kind of want her bangs to kind of go like that. <laughs> I don't know why my voice changed when I said that, but I kind of want to have some swoosh bangs. So I'm going to add a little bit of texture. You see that distressed part of the jacket is coming up, so I'm going to make sure I put a little glob there. I'm going to give it a swoosh. I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about now because I'm giving it a second coat over here. Her hair's a little bit thicker and colorful on this side, especially because there's a little bit of that cracking over there. I'm going to bring it down at an angle, kind of make it a swoosh, like I said. Fill in some of that cracking, cover up a little of that blending. Then I'm going to come down here. Liking that a little bit better. A little bit better. Might do a little bit, you know, not might. I'm going to go ahead and take some of the limeade and add that. Hi, Mikey. You can't sit on that right now, baby. I'm painting it. You're going to smell the paint? It's okay if you smell it because it's a uh, low VOC. It's not going to hurt you, which is wonderful about these paints. These paints, by the way, can be done inside because there is no smell. Low VOCs. No toxic fumes. I am using the same brush that I just used, dipping it in the limeade. That way I can get a little bit of a blending still going on here. And give her a little bit of a swoosh over here on her bangs. Side bang, swoosh. Bring in that part a little bit. That distress part. A little bit of that, uh, glass is coming through because I'm using the same brush. I'm going to pull this down. Give her a little bit more texture. Her Pella. Is that right? Her hair Pella. Yeah, pantalones is pants. Pella is hair. Crease up the jacket a little bit and pull that down. Give her hair some texture. Swoosh bangs. Let those bangs swoosh to the side. There, I'm liking that better already. Put the tops back on. Just because I can. You know what? While well, I have this color still on, I'm going to dip a little bit into the sea glass. Add a little dot. 
I'm just going to do it with a white highlight, but I think I'm going to highlight with a mixture of sea glass and limeade. There. I kind of like that. I can keep on keeping on. Highlight of her lip. There. If you don't like it, just go back. I'm liking that. Although, does that look like a mustache? <laughs> I don't think it does, but either way. All right, I'm going to take a break here. She is going to be sealed. I believe I'm going to use clear coat either in satin or glossy. I believe I'm going to go with satin just because the jacket already has like a satiny sheen, not a glossy sheen. and Kind of keep with it so it's all matches. Okay, I've been letting this dry for several hours now, and I'm going to take some clear coat, Dixie Belt, and satin. There's only a little bit left in this jar, so I'm going to dip in my brush. This is the Dixie Belle, the Bell. I'm going to load it up pretty good, and I'm just going to go straight on top of this artwork. Hi, Mikey. My kitty is not the time. I'm going to keep dipping back in. I'm applying this pretty thick. No, my feet. Here, here's where some of the stuff is distressed, like I was talking about. So I'm gonna cross hatch that on sideways, and just a little bit of black on the brush to take it off. Now, because the eyeball was really thick when I put it on, I'm going to go over that cross-hatch style. There. And work it up a little bit into the jacket down the side. Can you see that? It's hard to tell, but okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up here. Apply it to the top. And remember, this jacket has a bunch of distressing on it with these spots. Covering this in satin clear coat by Dixie Bell. I'm coming up a little bit further on the jacket than where just the painting is because it is a satin and uh, it'll give a little gloss. And even though this jacket's a little glossy on its own. I just want to go up a little bit so it's not obvious that it just stops. I'm going all the way over to uh, the sides and up to there. The arm of the jacket is actually made out of like a cotton material, almost like a, uh, what do you call it? Not a jersey, but a letterman's jacket. So 
there's the vinyl or leather here, and then over here is material, so I will uh, be washing them up. So great, now the cats are going <laughs> to fight while I'm doing this. Hey, you guys, can you wait to, um, quote, play till I'm done? I guess it's kind of like having the kids start yelling at each other. Mom, she's touching me. She's touching me. That's what the cats are doing. Now, this is the part of the jacket's really distressed. And so I am applying this goofingly. Hi, Petey. Pushing down some of that lifting part of the jacket. And because this clear coat can be used as a sealer and a tacky glue, almost like a Mod Podge material that you can use, I'm able to coat and adhere some of these spots that are lifting due to the uh, distressing. So there. That's why you see me going up and down here instead of just across. I'm trying to get some of that lifting vinyl or leather down and kind of glued down while I'm sealing it. A little bit more. There. Lay that down, spread it out, add it a little bit over here to the sides, like I guess, and get the glossy sheen all the way up to the top of the jacket. There. Now, what I'm going to do is turn the fan on, let it dry for a little bit, and then I am going to add another coat of this clear coat inside. This should seal it and help with that distressing part. There you go. It's super early and we're headed to a doctor's appointment, but also we have to drop off the packages after we get done. So good morning to Kenneth Van Etten of Corning, New York. And good morning to Jackie Easley of Saratoga, California. Wow, we're going from both sides of the country. And Lauren Shanahan from Crystal Lake, Illinois. Crystal Lake, isn't that the Jason movie, Lake? I'm sure she gets say that. And then, of course, SMS Spencer from Newberry Park, California. So, yeah, we're going from New York to California and everywhere in between. Thank you for supporting us online. Check it out. Zan painted that on a jacket. It's pretty cool. It's a vintage guest jacket, size large. I don't know if a guy or a girl, but I love it. It's got distressing. Like I said, it's cracking. Hence why I painted that on the back. Don't forget, I coated it with Dixie Belle clear coat and satin to keep it a little bit glossy. There you go.